uh, for uh, January. That's the last January service we have next week. Uh, so we will have our annual business meeting and voting on church officers and also for deacons uh, at that time. And just a little change here in the bulletin. I don't know how this got in there because um, usually I just use last week's bulletin and then keep it going from there. So somewhere along the line it got changed and did get changed back. But our evening service Wednesday night is not at 7 o'clock. It is 7.30. Uh, so just make a note of that. Uh, and we do start School of the Bible tomorrow evening. Uh, we were going to start that last week, but because of the snow, uh, we weren't able to do that. Um, I'm trying to think here. We do have a baptism also after uh, this morning service, so we're looking forward to that. And we've got a treat for you. Uh, looking forward to Dan preaching. It'll be the first time he's preached here at our church. Uh, he's been in the ministry for uh, several years. Uh, served as a youth pastor, assistant pastor, youth pastor. Uh, he served up in Ohio temporarily, and then he went down to Florida, served down there for a few years, and then the Lord led him up here uh, to our church, and, and I'm thankful to have uh, Ian Bethany and, and Titus here in the church, and they've been a blessing to us, just kind of fit right in since they've been here last February, and uh, it's almost like they just always belong here, so praying that God will use him in a great way as he brings the message here. Now, I did forget two weeks ago... Uh, Anytime I change something that knocks me out of my routine, I forgot to do our memory verses uh, for the young people and also for the adults. So uh, I went, got all psyched up because Craig was preaching and went right into everything and forgot all the memory verses. So uh, anyway, we're going to do that here in a few moments, and uh, but we're going to welcome one another to our service right now, and I'm going to try to think of that thing I forgot while we're doing that. So let's all stand. And let's welcome one another to our service and then prepare for our Sunday afternoon.
turn number 487. Stand and sing. Now I belong to Jesus. 487.
take a few moments, as the you know, preachers normally say, take a few moments, but they never just take a few. You know, it's a little bit more than that, but uh, let's take a few moments here. And I want to talk to you about something that I actually had set to uh, uh, preach New Year's Eve that evening when uh, everyone was, uh, has opportunity if they like. And then I got COVID, so I couldn't do it. And uh, the pastor called me and told me about this, his idea about this, and he wanted me to do this. And I said, okay. And I was going to preach last week, and that didn't work out. So <laughs> now we're here, isn't that? <laughs> so. Believe it or not, eventually you got stuck here. All right, um, but we're going to talk about something tonight. Uh, not tonight, this afternoon, and it's something that we don't like to do. It's something that it can be very difficult to do, but it's a lot of times and almost always needful to do. And that is a terrible word called change. Change. It's a hard thing to do, and we have to be careful about it. Because there is bad change out there, and there's change as a change of doctrine. That's something that we would not want to do. Anything that goes against the Bible, that would not be a change of good things. But the Bible does talk about how in our mind we have to be careful with change and viewing things of what is tradition and what is then biblical. What is uh, something maybe we've been taught and what's something that, oh, well, my mom and dad always did this, and, but what the Bible actually says. So today we're going to be talking about change, and it's going to be changing for this new year. The changing as we're going into 2022, changing and things for the Lord. Let's go ahead. In the book of Jeremiah, we're going to be in chapter 18. I'm sorry if I haven't told you that already. Jeremiah chapter 18. We're going to read the first six verses. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. And follow along with me as I read. The Bible says... The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Let's go ahead and let's pray this afternoon. Dearly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your house, this opportunity, Lord, to be in your word. Lord, I do pray, Lord, as uh, you've given me this opportunity to be able to preach, Lord, this a beautiful opportunity, Lord. I pray that you would just you know, use me as an instrument of use, Lord. Speak through me this afternoon, Lord. And I pray that we will uh, listen, Lord, to hear what your word says, Lord. Not me, Lord, but what, the, but what your word says and what your Bible says and what we can stand on. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will bless us and bless us this afternoon, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So change. So first off, what I like to mention in change is the very most important thing in change. And if you don't have this settled then uh, the rest of this message is not for you until you get this settled. And that is your final destination of change. Your final destination of change, which is what I'm talking about is our salvation. Our salvation, uh, as uh, Pastor mentioned this morning, uh, verse John three sixteen, which I know we all know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, if you are saved here this morning, I hope you don't become numb to right. hear the plan of salvation. Right, it's something that could be easily done as a Christian. I know for me, I praise the Lord, I'm a second generation Christian. Both my parents were saved. I was brought up in church. You know, ever hear the saying? I, I didn't get to go to church. I was dragged to church. Every time the doors were open, I was there. And I had that blessing to be able to have that. So I'm a second generation Christian. But with that comes the thoughts of uh, my ears have become numb to certain things. And I pray as Christians, we don't become numb to yes, hearing of the right. gospel. And hearing of that wonderful verse, John 3, 16, I believe it was either Billy Graham or Billy Sunday, I can't remember. He preached over a hundred different sermons on just John 3, 16. All different sermons off of one verse. There is so much in that verse. I hope we don't become numb to that as Christians. I hope we don't become numb to the testimony of salvation, a gospel message. I hope it still affects every time we hear it, our hearts, we can feel it. We can remember back. Of when that time we ask Jesus Christ to be our Savior. Ask Him yes. to come into us and save us. 
And that's why I'm going to talk to you real fast. This is the first point of the final destination. I hope you have made that change in your life. When I'm talking about this final destination change, I'm talking about that time. The Bible tells us that every man wants to die, not W-A-N-T-S, but O-N-C-S. Talk about once as one time to die. Every man, we're all going to die one day. We all realize that. And we don't know when. God's the only one that knows when. It could be now. It could be 20 years from now. You can grow up to be 70 in your 80s. Or you can maybe not make it past your teenage years. We don't know when that time is. And God's the only one that does. So I hope you've made this decision of knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Knowing that you are a sinner in need of salvation. That you on your own, you cannot get to heaven. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 uh, that all come short of the glory of God. That means anything you can do because of your sin, you will always fall short of the glory of God. You never can make it to heaven on your own. It's impossible. You can't do it. As the uh, pastor said this morning, there's only one way to heaven. That's through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's the, that's the only way. And he gave his life. He, God sent his son here to die on this earth for you and me. That we can have salvation. He came to this earth. He shed his blood for you and me. So that we might be saved. So we can change our final destination from hell to heaven. So I hope you have that settled here today. That's first and foremost. If you don't have that settled, then the rest of this message is not for you. Now to the Christian, if you have that settled in your life, if you are saved, I want to talk to you about something that's changing. A change that we can make in our lives. You know, the change... That God, He's the only one that can make that. I'm not sure if, if you're teenagers, if your parents have told you this or not. I know I remember my dad telling me this actually when I started dating my wife. He said, son, you won't ever change her. So how she is is how she's always going to be. And you have to remember, she's on her best behavior now. So if she does something like that now, she ain't going to like it even more once you're married. And it's true. That really is how it is. But, he was saying, telling me, letting me know, I will not change her. She cannot change me. People can't necessarily change people unless they allow it. It's the same way with God. God is the only one that can really change a man. The true change. But God, I don't know if you know this or not, but he is a perfect gentleman. He doesn't force his way through in your life. He's a perfect gentleman. He will knock at that door and knock at that door and wait for you to open and invite him in. So what I want to talk to you about is are you willing to let God change you? Because you have to allow God to change you. You have to be willing to let him change you. In verses 4 and uh, four through 6 here, this is how God changes us. How God changes. He gives us a perfect example here with the potter. Verses 4 through 6, I'll read real fast. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, and it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine, O house of Israel. God gives us that great example of the potter and how he works as a saying. Now, I'm not sure if anyone has seen a potter work a wheel or not. I actually had a teacher in high school. He taught a couple classes. He taught the art class. I didn't have him for art. But I remember him explaining to me how it worked. I went down to his classroom one day. I was passing by. I can't remember where I was going. But I was passing by his classroom one day. He said, you know, hi to me. And I said, hi. And he was showing me what he was, his class was doing. They were doing pottery work. And he showed me how that wheel worked. How he pumped it with his foot to get that wheel spinning. But first, that clay had to be put in the middle. And it spun it, spun it. And you had to get your hands wet. And then how you molded it. You made it. And it was all off of what you did. The clay didn't move on its own. You had to move it. You had to make it what you wanted it to be. We have the perfect example here that God gives us in Jeremiah of how he makes changes in our lives. You see, because these changes in our lives, are, they're not easy changes. Sometimes they're old habits that are hard. Sometimes, like I said, they're things that we, we've known of for years and years. You know, mommy and daddy, did, my grandpa always did this. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. A lot of it's good things. 
uh, sayings we talk about all the time, good moral sayings, are a lot of times found on biblical principles. But allowing God to change us is just like that potter. It's a little pressure, a little pulling, molding. The Bible says marred. Marred, that word, what it means is kind of uh, broken. Not necessarily maybe broken, but chipped. Or not maybe necessarily chipped, but as in disformed. Not right for the potter. We may look at it and say, oh, it's fine. I don't know if you ever said this, but I remember, uh, I grew up in a public school all my life. I remember thinking, I'm not as bad as they are. I remember that thought being in my head. I'm not as bad as they are. I don't do those things. It doesn't mean what I was doing right, but I was justifying myself. In a sense, I was looking at that, 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 that vessel and I was saying, well, it has that little lump there, but it's okay. But in my potter's hands, it was not okay. <laughs> so you know how a potter changes that? When he puts pressure and he can't work it out, start all over. He breaks it down to bearing it back up. That's what God does with us. Yeah. He'll break you down to bring you back up. Now, does that mean God's wanting to break us down? No, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, if you allow God to change you, if you allow him, if you open your heart's door, let him in that room, that, you know, that secret room that no one really knows about or no one, you'll, no one else goes in, but you know about it in your life, whatever it may be. And he's been knocking for a while, hearing sermon after sermon, and sometimes the knocker gets louder, but sometimes we soften that knock and we can't hear as much. That knock's never quit, though. You have to allow him to come. You have to invite him in. And when you do, he may break it. He may, he may tear it down a little bit. But it's only to be able to bring you back up. That tear down that time, that, that's hard. Those are those hard times. Uh, with an addiction, that's what we would maybe call withdrawal. Those are the hard things that you're having. It's such a hard battle. But he's doing that to be able to bring you back up. But you know, what I'm talking about today is not just with addictions. I hope you do know that, Christian. I'm not talking about just, you know, if we, I, I call them like the main sins we talk about in church. You know, tobacco, drunkenness, you know, uh, idolatry, all these things, those, those main things we talk about in church. But I'm talking about gossip. Yeah. I'm talking about what goes on in here, in your mind. I talked to my Bible class uh, this week, and we were talking, we're starting on the, the Sermon on the Mount in that class, and we were, I was talking, I had a question come up, and I talked to him about the importance, the Bible talks about the importance so many, so often, so many times. Of purity, but that's not just purity as in the the uh, a physical act of a man and a woman. But it's all about the purity, the purity of your mind, right. keeping what you have come in here. You guard it, you keep it pure, because those things last with you. Those things don't go away. I know a pastor and I've talked about it. You know, there's so many times I can hear a song that I haven't heard in over ten years. Come on, and I'll know every single word. That's right. yeah. It's not because I listen to that music anymore. But it's because it's in here. I allowed it to come in here. Those things don't really go away. They're hard. We have to protect ourselves, be pure, but you have to let God change that stuff. That's what I'm talking about. But you have to be willing to let Him change. Willing to let Him point those out to you. We have to be willing. Are you wanting to change the Lord? Do, do you want Him to bring that up in your life? You know, there's something that God wants us to be. There is, a, there is, in a sense, an end goal of where God wants us, how he wants to build us up. So if that's a question you may have in your mind of, oh, I want God to change me, but how far do I need to go? I, I want God to change me, but how much does he really want me to do? Well, there is, there is he tells us in his word. Christian, what does that mean? Like Christ. 
In Romans chapter 12, if you'd like to turn there, you can. Romans chapter 12, just the first two verses, he tells us really what he's requiring of us. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That reasonable service there, that, that bare minimum. That's the least expected. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That is just one example. Another example he has for us of our end goal, and if you want to call it that, of where he wants to bring us to, is in Zechariah. I'm doing the same thing, Pastor Derrick, like I'm singing books of the songs in my head. I don't know where Zechariah is at. Sometimes, even as Christians, we, you know, I mean, the second generation, whatever you want to call it, we sometimes think we can keep God out of this little part of our lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, he, he doesn't really know about this. And we know better. We do. We know better. We know he's smarter than that. We know he knows all things. We know he's everywhere. We know all this. But for some reason, in our minds, we've convinced ourselves no one knows about But I encourage you, listen to a children's song. You ever listen to a children's song that we teach them here? Listen, just listen to this lyric. 
This is something we struggle with as adults. And these areas I'm fixing to say is where I hope you let God change you. Well, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little feet, where you go. There's a reason why we teach those songs to children. Because songs do teach, I hope you know that. Yeah, right. I'm sure I could sing you a commercial here and y'all could finish the end of it. <laughs> because they teach you. It, it does. It, 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 it's part, that's how music works. That's why we do these songs. But it's so important. I hope you let God change you in those areas of your life. Now, when you, I, know, I don't know about you. When I hear about eyes, what you see, I automatically think of the internet, what you allow yourself to browse and look at. I automatically think of what you let yourself read, what you let yourself look at in pictures. But you know, it's more than just that. I hope you know. Uh, a lot of it is going on in our living rooms, right there on the TV, all we allow. I'm not sure if you noticed this, anyone with younger kids. I remember Titus, he was watching, it was a little Disney show or something. And sure enough, now there's a gay couple on. Yeah. Turn that bad boy right off. Amen. Amen. You, need to, you need to know your children. That's right, right, yes. Yeah. And then you have to remind yourself what you're allowing yourself to watch. Yeah. Because trust me, if it's going on in Titus' shows that he watches, I promise you it's going on shows that maybe you're watching. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are you allowing yourself to see, to hear? All those things. You have to make that decision. Are you letting God make that change? I'm not saying there's certain things. I remember a certain movie I had, I can't remember the title of it. But it wasn't necessarily a bad movie. It wasn't what we maybe consider to be a bad movie. It had it was a lot of historical part of the movie. But I remember the Lord was just dealing with me, dealing with me, dealing with me about this one movie I had. I could not, I just could not get over it. And it was not a movie I would say everyone should not have. But for me, the Lord was dealing with me, dealing with me, dealing with me. I had to let him in, allow him to change me, make up my mind. And I did. I went home and I threw it in the trash. Now, I'm giving that example to say, what are you willing to let God change in you? Are you willing to throw some things out? This new year that we're going into, are you looking forward to what God has to change in you? And now I'm not just talking about physical things either. Now I'm talking about spiritual things. Right. What are you letting God change you spiritually? You may be a person that does not like the sun. Maybe you let God change your heart to know that He wants you to sin. Amen. He wants you to sing glory on and praise to Him when you're in the house of God. Yeah. He wants that. Now it may be a silly little example. But it's true. And even more deeper things spiritually. What are you willing, what, what are you really letting God willing to change, let him change you? I have a challenge for you men. Do your children see you do devotions? Read your Bible, study your word. I know for me, growing up, there's always one thing I, I constantly think about, and I struggle with myself to do it. But I always think about it. In my family, we didn't, we didn't have necessarily family devotions. But I had a friend, and he, uh, him and his wife are actually on deputation now. Uh, I think they are missionaries in North Korea. But I remember going to his house, staying the night at his house or something. And every night, they had family devotions. They had their own devotions they are supposed to do. And then they also had a family devotion they are supposed to read over. And their dad came down there all in the living room. He'd read that portion of scripture, and they all discuss it. He'd talk about what it meant, and he would, and he would ask them questions about how, what, what were they getting out of that. And it does, it challenges me all the time. Why can't I make time to do that with my family? Now, I expect my wife, and I expect myself... We need to have our daily walk with the Lord. We need to have our relationship with the Lord. But you know, men, the reason why I'm saying men is we're, we're spiritual leaders of our family. That's 
Right. How are your children supposed to know unless you teach them? How are your children supposed to be able to know it without you without seeing it? <clears throat> so what about letting God change that for you spiritually? Let's not give excuses of why I don't have time. I'll be honest, I'm gonna be a proponent of that. Oh, I don't have time. Make time. Right. What what is taking your time? Yeah, it's good. Is it is it worth it? What what is that really doing for you? Now I understand, gentlemen we, and, and ladies also. I know we work, and I know we have to do that to provide for our families. I get that, but don't let that take over from your family, take away from your family, because I promise you, the others are more. Where are you putting your time? Let's not give excuses. Let God change you this year. He, he's going to. He's knocking. And guess what? If you allow him, he's going to mold you. He may chisel a few things away. you got some sharp corners. He's going to chisel away because he's going to refine you. He's going to try you a little bit. And it may hurt. But I promise you, after that time period is over, after that tear down, that build up has happened, you'll be able to look back on this last year and just in tears think, look what God has done. Amen. Look what I've let God do. I praise the Lord that God put on my heart to let him change us. And yes, amen. I don't know about you, but I, I do that my person myself. I look back on a year and think, have I grown? Mm -hmm. Not obviously physically. <laughs> but <laughs> have I grown? And I think about spiritually. Spiritually, has there been a difference? Am I, am I stuck in the same spot? Because I promise you, I've been. I've been that way. I remember for like two years in a row. Because I remember talking to my wife about it. I was so upset with myself. And you know what it was for me? I didn't grow spiritually toward my, my preaching. I felt like my preaching was just like if I was a teenager. It made me sick. Not because I, I really look forward to being this great preacher or whatever. I, I, no, nothing about that. It was because I knew I should be doing better. Because I knew spiritually I have not grown to where I'm going deeper into God's word where I think I should be. I didn't grow at all. It made me sick. When I really sat and I thought about it. And I thought the reasons why I don't have time. I work two, three jobs. I don't have time to read my Bible. I don't know how people get up so early to read their Bible. I got to get up early for work. All these excuses I may make to myself. And I remember looking back, looking back. Oh, God started thinking with me. If I had to let him come in. I had to allow him to come in and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, that hurts a little. That hurts a little, Lord. Now, Lord, now listen, when I agreed to this, Lord, I didn't know I was going to be going through this. At the end of it, I was able to look back and say, Oh Lord, I can't believe you did this. Look where you brought me from. Look what you've done in my life. Oh Lord, look how I can look at my child, look at the growth I can see in him. God, thank you. I praise you, Lord, for changing me. He wants to change you, he wants to mold you, and make you into a vessel. That talks about that vessel. He's molding you, making you for something. The Bible tells us, talks to us about a vessel. I'm going to end with this. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 
19 through 21, the Bible says this. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having his seal, the Lord knoweth them that are, in, are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, <laughs> he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Meet the master's use. What do we what do we see there in Jeremiah? When he when the potter and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again unto another vessel as seemed good. To the potter to make. Good to the potter to make. What do we see about a vessel? Good unto his good to use. Good work. Meet that master's use. What are you looking like tonight? Is that afternoon? What's your vessel looking like? Well, that's good in my eyes. Mm. What about what about that? The potter's hand. What does it look like at him? Can he look at it and say, meet the master's use? Are you willing to let him change you? He's the perfect gentleman. He's not going to force himself on you. He's not going to force himself to say, you got to change right here. This is going to happen. No. He's just going to wait. As the perfect gentleman does. When you invite him in, he's going to say, I want to show you a few things. You may not like to hear them. They may not feel too great after I tell you. And after you let me work, you trust me. And he's going to get to work. And it's not going to feel too good, maybe. And it may not hear too good when, he, when, you, when the Lord shows you and you hear it from him. But trust me. Are you willing to let God change you this year? Let's all go ahead and stand. Let's have a time of invitation. This afternoon, have you made that decision in your life? First off, have you changed that final destination in your life? Do you know if you were to die today where you would spend eternity? If you don't, I pray you sell it here now. Trust me, time is not something you can count on. You can't count on time. I had a good friend of mine. That good, that same friend I was talking about being mission, going to be a missionary. He's on deputation. He had a younger brother who was a year younger than me, and he's a year older than me. He died in his sleep when he was 11 years old. Biops came back, they had no clue why. For some reason, the Lord took him home. I don't know. I praise the Lord, he had a testimony of salvation. I know I'll get to see him one day. But I promise you, time is not on your side. You don't know. So don't wait to make that decision. Trust Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. Are you willing to let God change you this year? What are you willing to let him change? Are you willing to let him in? Well, we're going to have a song of invitation. 397. 397. I was thinking as Dan had asked the question, are you willing to let God change you? Remember what the Bible says, know you not that you are not your own. You're bought with price. So often we're afraid to let God change us because we're like, well, what if he changes it to something I don't like? I can promise you this. What God's will is for your life is what you would choose for yourself if you do everything God did. So don't be afraid of it. Just let him change it. As we're starting to sing here, you go, you come as God has led you. Whatever your need is, just step out from where you are. I decided to follow Jesus.
baptismal. So we'll sing a song here. It's always my kind of thing. Rodney always puts the song, uh, the song numbers down there. The bottom of the page for the, the uh, baptismal service, he had the number 510 jotted down, Shall We Gather at the River. <laughs> Rodney, I don't have anything in the world against that song, but a long time ago, that was every time. Remember <laughs> Every time. It was Shall We Gather at the River. So when I see that at the bottom of the page, I got, I got a chuckle to myself, right? I like, hear that song again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's turn to number 510. We'll sing a couple verses of Shall We Gather at the River. Shall we gather? Redeeming Love, some people are saying is a Christian movie. Let me go ahead and warn you, 
That is not a Christian movie. It's supposed to be based off the book of Hosea, but it's got a lot of uh, very, very indecent things in it. Um, it's very graphic. So uh, I haven't researched it completely and thoroughly, but she had checked it out, sent it to me, and I just didn't mention it this morning. should have mentioned it. So please be careful of things like that. But let's all stand, and we'll be dismissed here in a word of prayer. I'm going to ask Jared to keep my closing and prayer for us, please. Dear you know, Lord, we just come to you this evening by our God. God, we come to you and we're thankful for Avery and her uh, following you in believers' baptism. God, we just uh, thank you for your goodness, God. We just thank you for the message that Brother Dan brought to us, God. And God, we just ask that you would help us to set our selfish uh, ways aside, God, that we would compare ourselves with you, God, and realize how short we come and then not only realize it, but be willing to change. And God, we just know that uh, there's souls that are at stake, God, because of our selfish ways. So God, just please help us as each individual Christian here to be willing to change. God, we ask that you be with each individual here as we go out into the week. Uh, God, and we uh, go out and God help us to serve you and God to be a uh, light into a dark world. And we ask it all to your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.